I'm making this video as a quick update to my previous video that talks about how to set up virtual desktop for a flawless wireless VR experience. Immediately after posting that video, Virtual Desktop released an update with slightly different settings. This video will go over these changes and show you how to optimize your Virtual Desktop settings to get the best possible experience with your setup. First, I had said that you need to install Revive to play Oculus Rift games through Virtual Desktop. I was informed that this is no longer the case. Revive is still a nice program if you want to see all of your Rift games in Steam VR, but if you don't like having extra programs or are trying to save space, you do not need Revive anymore to play Rift games. To play Rift games through Virtual Desktop, simply open the menu by pressing the menu button on your left controller, go to games and select whatever game you want to open. All of your Steam and Oculus games will be listed there. Now let's talk about the virtual desktop settings. As stated before, some settings will have no effect on your VR experience. The settings under computer, environment quality, desktop bitrate, and dynamic lighting all have nothing to do with VR. They will only affect your experience if you're using virtual desktop to do things on your computer like watch movies or work. Under audio, make sure you have the microphone pass through enabled. A lot of people get really frustrated trying to figure out why other people can't hear them and this is usually why. Make sure it is enabled and other gamers should hear you in multiplayer games. Under VR streaming, make sure you select sliced encoding. This won't work with all GPUs, but with those that it does work with, it will make your VR experience better. I have an NVIDIA RTX 2060 and it seems to improve my experience. I don't really use any of the advanced settings. Boost clock rates is useful when I'm recording videos, but otherwise I leave it unchecked. If you're having a hard time getting smooth VR with little lag, try limiting the frame rate to 60 frames per second. You won't really notice the 12 frame difference from the Quest Standard 72, but it might make your experience smoother in the end because there's less data moving between your PC and the Quest. The two most important settings are the VR graphic quality and the VR bitrate. Having both of these settings maxed out will make your game look the best it can, but will increase lag and lower performance. The goal with these two settings is to experiment and find the optimal settings for your setup. For example, if you have a bad connection to your PC, you will have to have lower settings than someone who has a dedicated Wi-Fi 6 router for the Quest as explained in my previous video. When experimenting with these settings, make sure you experiment using the most demanding game you own. I used Half-Life Alex. Also have someone keep an eye on your latency, which can be seen in the Virtual Desktop Streamer app. Latency is measured in milliseconds and is how much time elapses between the data transfer. Any latency under 50 milliseconds is acceptable and hardly noticeable. Once you get to 50 milliseconds and higher, it does start to be a little annoying. Do not expect to get latency under 25 to 30 milliseconds. At 30 milliseconds, you won't hardly notice the lag unless you're moving your hands super fast and looking for it. It is definitely there, don't get me wrong, but it won't change your in-game experience in any noticeable way. Now, our goal is to get the highest possible graphical quality with the least amount of latency. So, as you change your settings, watch the latency so that you can decide what settings work for your setup. When I was experimenting with this, I first maxed out the bitrate and changed the VR graphics quality between the three different options. I didn't see any changes in the latency between the three settings, so I decided to just stick with the highest option for the best experience. Then, with the highest VR graphics quality selected, I moved around the bitrate to see what kind of latency I was getting. Keep in mind your performance here will change from game to game, so feel free to change this option between different games. I used Half-Life Alex as a benchmark since it is the most demanding game that I have, and if I can get it to look good, then any other game that I have will definitely look fine. While playing around with this setting, you'll notice that Virtual Desktop will kind of suggest a bitrate level for you. With my dedicated router setup, Virtual Desktop was suggesting about 90 megabits per second in some games. When I tried using my regular Wi-Fi, Virtual Desktop recommended something around 70 or 75. Don't set your bitrate any higher than recommended. In fact, it might be useful to set your bitrate lower than what's recommended if you want to get rid of as much lag as possible. This will lower the visual quality, but might lower your latency if for those games that really need it. In the end, I can't give you an optimal number to use because it will vary based on your setup and what games you're playing. So just experiment with it. If you understand that you want the highest bitrate possible with the lowest amount of lag, you should be able to find a good balance between the two that works for you and your preferences. That's it for this video. I hope this helps you to understand your virtual desktop settings a little bit better. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to answer them in the comments or in future videos. But for now, I'm out.